or I don't know how to bake chocolate chip cookies, we can just hop online and search out a recipe. But what if we are robots? Thanks to those infernal CAPTCHAs, today's robots are often blocked from surfing the web. But is that fair? A group based primarily in Europe has been working on an open source cloud engine designed to be used by and for robots. It makes sense. Why should each new robot have to relearn what other robots have already learned? And instead of carrying out heavy computations on board, why not tap the computing power of millions instead? Think of all those dumb toasters out there that would love to figure out how to take you out one morning and turn your button pressing self into one big piece of toast. On the other hand, when animals and robots come together, it can be true awesomeness. First comes love, then comes marriage, then comes the silk moth that rides in on its own two-wheeled carriage. By tracking the moth's behavior, BioGeeks are hoping to eventually create biologically inspired autonomous robots that can be used to detect environmental spills and toxic leaks. Male silkworms were chosen because of their distinct mating dance, where they move in a straight line, then zigzag in order to sniff out pheromones. I think I dated one of those in college. <laughs> For the initial trials, the moth was able to successfully find his way to the lady moth's pheromones every time. When a cover was put over the robot so the moth couldn't see, he still found the pheromones 84% of the time. This suggests that he, and by he I mean to say the moth, used both sight and smell, proving that... But, there's a war raging in northern Italy right now. A war that threatens to wipe out an entire population. That's right, I'm talking about the war between the Reds and the Greys. In the Italian region of Piedmont, the Red Squirrel population has been all but eradicated by the larger and more aggressive Grey Squirrel. Originally introduced to the ecosystem as a gift from the U.S. Ambassador in 1948, the Grey Squirrel is rapidly killing off all the local Red Squirrel population with a deadly form of squirrel pox. The species may spread as far as France, further threatening the European red squirrel population, which is already near extinct in the British Isles. If the extinction of the red squirrel has you ruminating over the fragility of nature, consider this 3,200-year-old sequoia tree. Nicknamed the President, the sequoia is an invincible carbon dioxide processing machine. Not literally, because, you know, it's a tree. But, contrary to popular belief, a recent study showed that the older the tree actually gets, the faster it grows. A part of the cypress family, the sequoias become stronger in its golden years, sporting bark so thick that it's immune to rot, wood beetle damage, and even fire. Which leads us finally to the internet's most popular viking, Techno Viking. Techno Viking is actually anonymous, but that's not stopping him from suing for association. Techno Viking became famous online for his amazing dance. You can see how he controls the situation. Matthias Fritsch captured the memetic video from a parade in Germany in 2001, but it wasn't until 2006 that its destiny became fulfilled when it was uploaded to YouTube for its spread. Despite the fact that Techno Viking put himself on display in a public parade where a bystander captured his behavior marching down the middle of the street, Techno Viking, who still remains anonymous as far as we can tell, is likely going to cause himself to become identified as a result of his own doing. And if he wins, this would be a major assault on the Germans' ability to film their public surroundings. The Techno Viking case appears to be gearing up for trial in the upcoming season, in which case it will be interesting to learn a lot more about the man behind the meme. And likely, that's probably what he wants. From New York City, where even the cops film in the streets, I'm Kegan, and this is Rocket Boom.